Hi, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's Meet the Analyst webinar, US TV ad spend forecast heading toward a converged future. I'm your host, senior analyst, Ross Benish, in our New York City headquarters, and I'm joined by my colleague, Paul Verna, principal analyst at Insider Intelligence, who is also in New York. Hey, Paul, great to have you here. Hey, thanks for having me, Ross. Before we get into the main presentation, I'd like to thank Innovid for making today's webinar possible and welcome Stephanie Gino, CMO at Innovid. Stephanie is joining us from Denver. Hi, hey, Stephanie. Hi, Ross. Thanks for having me. A few things before we dive in. We have a ton of information to share, but there's no need to take notes. We'll email you a link to view the slides and the full recording. But we do want you to participate. Just use the chat window on the right to submit questions at any time during the presentation. We'll get to as many as we can during the Q&A. So with that, Paul, let's get started. What's on the agenda today? Yeah, well, thanks again, Ross, and thank you all for tuning in today. It's great to have you. So here's what's on tap for today. We're gonna look at our latest TV ad spending and viewer forecasts. This will include linear TV, CTV, pay TV, national and local, programmatic, addressable, and upfronts. We'll delve into uh, TV and CTV ad pricing trends. We'll look at how TV ad measurement is evolving and how market conditions may be affecting ad spending. As always, we'll close with some takeaways and we'll leave time at the end for your questions. So let's jump right into the forecasts. Now, most of these were updated this quarter or last quarter as part of our twice a year schedule. There are a few that are updated once a year, so those would be from late 2021, but they are the exception. So I'm gonna start with linear TV ad spending. So I'm showing a long view here to give you a sense of what happened before and after the pandemic and what we expect for the rest of the forecast to 2026. So right away, you can see a huge dip in 2020, followed by a recovery in 2021 that's actually still continuing. Uh, but after that, it's mostly downhill, except for a slight bump in 2024 because of the US presidential election and the Summer Olympics. That boost that we get every four years is something we've seen for many, many cycles, so there's nothing really new or unusual about it. But leaving that aside, the basic story here is that linear TV ad spending is going to trend downward for the rest of the forecast and likely from here on in. Now, that percentage change line shows the positive and negative years with the negative in red under the zero line. And as you can see, um, the spending we project for 2026 will be roughly the same as 2021, not accounting for inflation. So let me share a few more highlights of the forecast or lowlights, as the case may be. Uh, spending will not return to pre-pandemic levels by 2026 and may never do so. The spending levels we're seeing this year are about the same as 2014. And again, that's not factoring in inflation. If you did include inflation, that 2014 figure, which was around 68 billion, would have to rise to about 84 billion this year. So that gives you an idea of how inflation factors into the comparison, especially now that it's running at a 40 year high. TV will make up less than 20% of total media ad spending this year, and it'll go down to less than 15% in 2026. That's a major drop from 2014 when it was around 40% of all media spending. All right, turning to CTV, very different story. So ad spending is gonna to top 38 billion in 2026, and that's more than an order of magnitude higher than in 2017, which is when we started tracking this. A couple of other nuggets, CTV will be over 10% of total digital ad spending in 2026. That's that uh, red percentage change line. And this is also a big change from earlier in the forecast. And for what it's worth, YouTube, Roku, and Hulu made up about half of CTV ad spending last year. Hey, Paul, you mentioned that uh, our forecast has been raised a few times. Do you anticipate that Insider Intelligence will raise this estimate again during its next update? 
Um, yeah, that's a good question and perfect timing because actually I did prepare um, a percentage or I'm sorry, forecast change slide. I do like to show these to see how our forecast has evolved. Um, so I mentioned earlier that most of our forecasts are updated twice a year, and this is one of them. We revisit it in March and October. So this chart is showing um, the view from the March updates for the past um, two years. So in March of 2020, just before the pandemic, that's that black line, we envisioned linear growth to 16 and a half billion in 2024. A year later, we raised that forecast significantly to over 24 billion in 2024. And we raised it again just now this past March to 28 and a half billion. So, um, and I will get to your direct question, Ross, but when we look at the difference between the first and the last forecast, we expect that the US CTV ad market will have gained over 12 billion by 2024 compared to what we were expecting before the pandemic. Um, in terms of what will happen in the next forecast cycle uh, this October, I think there are too many uncertainties, which I'm going to talk about later. Um, overall, we're not seeing that the market conditions are having a major immediate impact um, on ad spending to the point where we're going to dramatically you know, lower our forecasts. And I think the trend has been to raise them. But I will say, though, that um, you know, this is showing the March views. Um, in October of last year, in 2021, we were actually looking at a slightly higher forecast than we are seeing right now in March of 2022. So, um, I, you know, I think, and, and, and part of that is just factoring in inflation and some of the market uncertainties that we had seen even before uh, March. So we're always looking at prevailing conditions and seeing you know, how we need to adjust our forecasts. Um, and by the way, the reason we're showing this set of forecasts to 2024 is that that was the end point of the forecast when we did it back in 2020. So in order to do like um, apples to apples comparison, we thought it would be best to end the forecast there. But as I showed in the previous slide, we are now forecasting CTV all the way to 2026. So just want to note that. Um, okay, so <clears throat> having looked at uh, linear and CTV, I want to combine them and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to start with linear TV in the black bars, and these are the same numbers I showed earlier. So you see that flatline effect I talked about where essentially from 2021 to 2026, the numbers pretty much end up in about the same place. However, when you layer in CTV in the red bars, the picture changes quite dramatically. You have a compound annual growth of over 22% in that 2021 to 2026 window. And when you look at the totals, uh, combined spending in red above the bars, you can see that the market will surpass 100 billion in 2026. So that will be a big milestone. And the growth of this combination of TV and CTV will also be pretty healthy, 5.4% uh, in that same time frame. So you're really looking at a growth market, despite the attrition that we see on the linear side. Advertiser perceptions estimated that ad spending on OTT streaming services will outpace linear TV. 40% um, of ad buyers in this study say they'd increase OTT spending versus 24% for linear TV. And on the flip side, 12% of buyers plan to decrease linear TV spending compared with just 1% for OTT. And ad spending on things like VMVPDs and data-driven and addressable linear will also outpace traditional TV. Now, just a quick word about the jargon here. So we use terms like linear TV and traditional TV interchangeably. But all these other ugly acronyms um, and some other industry terms that um, I'll mention a little bit later, they are defined in a glossary that I'm not going to actually show during the presentation, but it will be part of the slide deck. So if you're curious about how we define certain terms, you'll see it in the glossary. But if you have questions about it as we go along, uh, please do include them in the Q&A. OK, so let's move on to some viewership stats. 
As much as TV ad spending is falling, the ranks of TV viewers are falling even faster. So as a percentage of the population, US TV viewers will drop by almost 14 points in the five years in this forecast from uh, 2019 to 2024. Now, if you're like me and you like to see these things um, expressed in compound annual growth, it's uh, negative 2.9% in this time frame. And a lot of what's driving this is a huge shift in the pay TV versus non-pay TV audience. And by non-pay TV, we mean the sum of cord cutters and cord nevers. So that's people who either canceled or never had traditional cable or satellite TV service. Hey, Paul, you mentioned that TV viewership is dropping, but the ad spending isn't dropping. They're, they're changing at different rates. Can you elaborate a little bit on why that is? Yeah, I mean, I think there are s several reasons for it. One is that there's typically a lag in um, ad spending. You know, it, it, it does follow audience, but it doesn't always follow it, um, you know, quickly. So sometimes you have inertia and, you know, um, agencies and marketers that have budgets that they allocate toward TV and, you know, old habits die hard. So they spend on those channels, even as they see, you know, ratings um, not quite meeting up to what, what they were used to. So I think that's one factor. I think there are also um, some issues with, you know, audience migration to digital, but linear TV network still very much invested in that channel. So there, there's not, I mean, there, there is a correlation, but it doesn't always happen very neatly. And I think we're definitely seeing that um, in terms of, you know, the ratio or the, you know, that relationship between advertising and audience. And we'll get into it a little bit more because I think pricing plays into that a bit, which we'll talk about later as well. So um, this group of, uh, you know, the what we call the non-pay TV audience, so that would be cord cutters and cord nevers, it will surpass traditional TV viewers um, in 2024. And that's a big change from around a decade ago when pay TV viewers outnumbered non-pay TV viewers by about six to one. And, you know, we've been tracking this and kind of like seeing that tipping point, um, you know, kind of like a slow motion, um, you know, in slow-mo, and now we're, we're finally getting close to it. Now, um, this non-pay TV audience is critical to advertisers because they're mostly not reachable on traditional TV. They tend to skew younger. So really that means that CTV campaigns that provide incremental reach over linear TV can be a win-win for buyers and sellers. Now, looking at just CTV users, that audience is growing as well, but it's already a very large cohort uh, that's starting to approach saturation. And keep in mind also that a lot of CTV viewing happens on non-ad supported platforms like Netflix, Amazon, and Apple TV. So that's partly why CTV ad spending is growing faster than viewers. And Ross, to your earlier point, this is another case where we see a lack of like a direct sync between the ad spending and the audience. Here it's for maybe a different reason than on the linear side, but um, but you know it's it's interesting to look at those dynamics and see how they play out. Um, so speaking of the non-ad supported platforms, um, Disney and Netflix have both made major announcements that they are going to roll out ad supported tiers. So once that happens, um, this dynamic will change. Okay, so for the next slide, if we were all in a physical room together, I would want to get a live response um, to this question. Um, so from how many sources do US TV viewers get their programming? Well, according to Hub Research, as of April 2022, the answer is 7.4 on average. So that includes, and sorry for the alphabet soup, but MVPDs, VMVPDs, SVODs, D2C platforms, ABOT services, and traditional platforms. Um, so again, I'll refer you to the glossary in case you need that. But the point is that we're watching for more and more sources every year. All right, so I promised at the top that I'd talk about national and local TV ad spending. So here's our first ever breakout along those lines. 
So basically the ratio of national to local TV ad spend in the US is around two to one. Uh, the gap between them narrows a bit during US election years uh, as relatively more dollars pour into local ads. And this is especially true of midterm years like this one, where there are more and more uh, local and statewide races. Okay, so let's shift gears and look at programmatic TV. So this spending will double in four years, uh, reaching over 8 billion by 2024 and making up uh, more than 12% of TV ad spend. So this is a small slice of the pie, but uh, programmatic TV is gaining thanks to the benefits of automation. There's a similar story with addressable TV where we also see essentially a doubling of spending in this four-year forecast, albeit with dollar volumes that are around half uh, of what I showed with programmatic TV advertising. It's interesting that addressable TV ad spending is rising despite an overall uh, attrition in addressable TV households. So what this tells you is that that addressable component is increasingly important to marketers. Uh, and looking at those households, so they've been falling since 2019, and from 2018 to 2022, the U.S. will have lost nearly 9 million addressable TV households, which is a lot. Now, still, addressable households are a growing share of all pay TV households, partly because that overall pay TV base is shrinking faster. All right, so let's shift to upfronts and newfronts. So this spending has stabilized after the pandemic drop. And by the way, our upfront forecasts are done by TV season as opposed to calendar year. So you can see that that 2020 to 2021 year was a tough one, but spending has pretty much mostly bounced back and will ever so slightly increase through the 2023-2024 season. So what this means is that upfront spending won't change drastically relative to total TV advertising. Um, and let me pause here to say that Ross recently published a report on the upfronts. So please feel free to seek it out or to ask Ross a question in the chat if you'd like to know more about this. Now, one other thing I'll say about the upfronts is that they're increasingly digital. So here's a side-by-side -side view of upfront CTV ad spending on the left and the video ad spending that's done at the upfronts and new fronts on the right. So even without squinting to look at the numbers, you can see that these are basically up into the right charts. Okay, so with that, let's turn to TV ad pricing. In linear TV, audience levels have dropped at a faster rate than ad spending, as I mentioned. So in effect, more dollars are chasing fewer viewers. Uh, to put a number on this, uh, Samba TV estimated that about 90% of US linear TV ad impressions were served to a little over half of viewers. And just this month, Zenith estimated that global TV ad prices would rise by somewhere in the order of 11 to 13%. Standard Media Index estimated that Q3 OTT CPMs were about 18% above linear. And right before the upfront season, Aaron Fernino of Advertiser Perception said we'd most likely see higher prices in the scatter market. Cross screen media also corroborated this price inflation trend. Um, they noted that most ad buyers and sellers expect increases in both CTV and broadcast TV um, ad prices. Cable TV was a little bit more of a mixed bag, but still with an expectation of rising prices. So, really, the bottom line sorry, I skipped ahead. Um, the bottom line is that CTV, broadcast, and cable TV ad prices are more likely to go up than down. All right, so let's talk TV ad measurement. So earlier this year, NBC Universal, Paramount, Disney, uh, and Warner Brothers Discovery announced partnerships with a slew of measurement and verification services, including the ones shown here. Uh, the point was to move past the days when Nielsen was the only currency. And this followed a year when uh, tensions between the networks and Nielsen boiled over, with Nielsen basically losing its accreditation from the Media Rating Council. But 
you'll note that Nielsen is one of the services that the networks are partnering with, which begs the question, are we really in a quote unquote post Nielsen era? Well, I guess it depends on who you ask. Uh, Sean Cunningham from the VAB talks about an urgent pivot to non-Nielsen measurement and currency, currency alternatives and of the need to quantify every impression. But others like Dave Morgan of Simul Media think Nielsen might continue to be the dominant primary currency. Again, we don't know how this story is going to end, but the industry is clearly in a period of experimentation. And it's worth noting, as Morgan does, that the networks are still under long-term contracts with Nielsen, and Nielsen is one of the companies that's proposing an alternative to its own panel-based system. So I guess all I'm going to say from this point is uh, just watch the space. Well, and Paul, another point um, that I wanted to throw out here is that TV networks are facing pressure for various reasons. Uh, do you believe that they're in a position to pay for an additional measurement vendor? I mean, I think when you look at what's going on in the economy and what we're starting to see in the ad industry, and, and when you look at how leveraged some of the um, media conglomerates are, they are definitely not in a position to throw more money around. I mean, they obviously want to get this right, and they um, are prepared to spend to get it right, and they have spent a lot on Nielsen. They're spending a lot on these alternatives, but at the end of the day, something is going to have to give and they're going to you know networks are basically going to try to do as much of they can, as much as they can with as little spending as they can so no i don't think that we're going to see you know an extended period when they're just going to keep you know paying different providers while they're also paying nielsen so i you know i i think we're really going to see this kind of like um shake out or you know some something will happen but it, it you know it's probably not going to happen in the very near future um so moving on to um i guess other uncertainties and to the last part of the presentation before i turn it back over to ross and to stephanie um so let's look at how we're thinking about the many unknowns with regard to the economy and the markets and global conflicts and public health and more so here's a quick rundown of some factors that could affect ad spending or that in some cases are affecting it. So the first is inflation, which as I mentioned is running higher than we've seen in about four decades. And I'm sure you all saw the announcement this week that the Fed made a rare three quarter point hike in the interest rate directly in response to high inflation levels. Supply chain issues are also causing a lot of headaches for manufacturers, for retailers, and for marketers. And really, at the simplest level, if an automaker can't get the parts they need to manufacture cars, then they're not going to have anything to advertise. Then there's the intense volatility we're seeing in the stock, stock market. I mean, companies that we almost always counted on to over deliver, like Meta, uh, Netflix, and Amazon, are suddenly struggling and losing hundreds of billions in value. Uh, the Apple privacy reset is still rever reverberating, um, maybe less in the TV space than in the social media world, but it's still a shot across the bow for the ad industry. The Russian war in Ukraine has, of course, upended life in that immediate region, but it's also starting to have ripple effects across the world with boycotts and shutdowns and higher oil prices and food scarcity and so many other issues that frankly are much bigger than advertising. And let's not forget the pandemic. You know, here in the US, we seem to be in a better place than we've been in since maybe before the whole thing started. But in some parts of the world, um, they're still struggling with, um, you know, shutdowns and, and outbreaks. And there's no guarantee that some variant won't rear its head here again. And, you know, it's also worth noting that lower infection rates that we're seeing in the U.S. are possibly the result of a lot of people testing at home and not reporting the results. So this is still a factor. Now, looking more specifically at CTV ad spending, uh, advertiser perceptions asked ad buyers how they felt about inflation and supply chain issues, and their responses were, you know, um, not very encouraging. 38% uh, 
said they would pull or pause CTV budgets because of rising inflation rates. And an even greater number, 47%, said they would do the same in response to supply chain issues. Now, you know, this makes sense because CTV is premium upper funnel advertising, and that's often the first thing that goes when marketers feel they need to cut back on their budgets. All that said, there are some silver linings for the ad industry. So some sectors that cut back on advertising in early 2020, like travel and cinema, have resumed spending at something like pre-COVID levels. And then you have industries that in some ways benefited from the pandemic, like FinServe and insurance and healthcare. So a lot of those companies accelerated, uh, accelerated their spending. Um, though given recent events, I might have to put an asterisk on this one, at least as it regards crypto. Now I mentioned car makers earlier and they've been hit hard by the semiconductor shortage. Appliance makers have not been as seriously affected by scarcity of chips, so they haven't cut back uh, on their spending as much as one might have thought. Um, and finally, decisions by Netflix and Disney Plus to run ads on their subscription platforms could really boost CTV spending, uh, given that both of those companies have enough scale to move the market on their own. Okay, so that brings us to takeaways. Number one, uh, linear TV ad spending is on a downward course, and I'm willing to predict that it's not coming back in any meaningful way. Luckily for TV networks, uh, streaming services, and, and the many other companies whose boats are, are lifted by this rising CTV tide, spending in that area will more than offset the softness in a traditional channel. And that convergence of linear and digital is what we consider the gist of the opportunity for marketers. And I can't stress that enough. I mean, the future of TV advertising is all about this convergence. Ad measurement is in a state of flux, or as I wrote in a recent report, it's a hot mess. Uh, TV networks are trying to work their way through the maze by testing new currencies, but we're only at the beginning of what will likely be a very long and winding road. And Yes, that's a nod to Sir Paul McCartney, who turns 80 this week. So that's, I guess, a sweet 16 older than 64. So happy birthday, Paul. And Paul's playing um, at MetLife tonight, Paul. I know, I know. Right for across sure. the river. Yes. Um, I saw him at Fenway last week, but that's a story for another time. So anyway, um, back to the presentation. So when it comes to uh, ad pricing... The dynamics are complicated, as we discussed, but the bottom line is CPMs are going up across both linear and CTV. Um, and the last takeaway is that there's an unusual number of external factors that are putting pressure on the economy and on the markets. So the ad industry is going to have to do what everybody else is doing, which is uh, buckle your seatbelts, play the long game, and Turn to the experts, like say insider intelligence to help you make sense of the chaos. And with that very, very shameless plug, back to you, Ross. Well, Paul, I appreciate the shameless plug and that presentation was great. Before we get to your live questions, we're joined now by Stephanie Gino, CMO at Innovid. Welcome, Stephanie. Thanks for being here. Hi, Ross. Thanks again for having me. I'm thrilled to be a part of this conversation today. Well, let's dive into a few questions. Uh, first off, what are you seeing in terms of the growth of CTV? Yeah, I mean, as, as Paul mentioned, there is no denying the rise of CTV. It has fundamentally changed the way that really TV and the overall advertising landscape has moved. At Innovid, we've been focused on CTV for well over a decade now, and our technology is one of the largest enablers of CTV advertising worldwide. So um, we also look at our data to help us understand trends and insights as to how much the video landscape has shifted due to the rise of streaming. Um, we just recently launched our global benchmarks and saw specifically that across the world, video advertising across every device type, mobile, desktop, as well as CTV skyrocketed. But what we saw within CTV specifically is that CTV volume grew at over 2x the rate of mobile and desktop. And so that means that for the first time ever, CTV actually overtook mobile in terms of share of the total video advertising market 
we had nearly half, about 46% of all video impressions worldwide being served on a connected device. And I think that really just hammers home the point that connected television has truly become a global phenomenon. And, you know, as Paul shared, there are no signs of that slowing down. Well, with uh, CTV becoming a global phenomenon, as you say, mm -hmm. uh, guarding its measurement, which Paul said is in flux uh, with TV, CTV, digital video, how do advertisers gain a more holistic view of their video campaigns across linear and digital as the world moves more towards CTV? Yeah, I, I mean, again, I, I, convergence is key. It is the topic of conversations these days. And when you think about the opportunity for converged TV advertising, it is enormous. TV will continue to expand. It will expand currencies, platforms, channels, screens, data sources. But whether we're talking about linear TV, CTV, addressable, or digital, measurement really needs to be built for all video. So it comes down to how do we integrate and how do we connect the dots? across fragmented TV audiences, which admittedly is, is no easy feat. Um, yesterday, we, we shameless plug on our end, we launched Innovate XP, which is the next evolution of our cross-platform measurement offering, and it's designed to do exactly that. It unifies delivery, so ad serving, creative, as well as measurement analytics in one platform, but most importantly, it does that at scale um, because we fundamentally believe that the key to solving the holistic view challenge it starts with the ability to consistently count, attribute, and analyze for, yes, reach, but not just reach, also outcomes. Uh, and we need to be able to do that across every platform, from linear to connected television. And then again, through the lens of convergence, we also need to keep our eye on digital, because digital needs to come into the mix here as well. Um, and I will say that, you know, Paul referenced this, but there are a host of solutions that are entering the market on what feels like a near daily basis. Basis. So when we when we think about that end goal of that unified vision, I think there's really two areas that I'd emphasize here, and that is does it have the coverage that you need and to what degree are the insights actionable? So from a coverage perspective, that means, does it cover all forms of linear and CTV advertising from local to national broadcasting cable and then addressable? And then from an actionability perspective, I'd be asking myself, are you receiving real time actionable analytics that allow you to gain audience intelligence, to optimize your media, to optimize your creative, and ultimately to deliver against that true end goal of supporting better business outcomes. Well, about those actionable metrics that you're referencing, Paul's presentation ended with him talking about market conditions, such as rising costs of TV ads, inflation, and other macroeconomic trends that have increased the emphasis on ROI and performance. Mm -hmm. Television's mostly been a branding and awareness vehicle in the past, but how should advertisers be rethinking their video ad spending to meet other benchmarks? Yeah, it, the beauty of CTV is that it has really opened advertisers' eyes to how television can go beyond that traditional view of being an awareness play and start to support more performance-oriented goals. And I think it comes down to a combination of better measurement and creativity. So for the through the lens of measurement, you know, through platforms such as Innovate XP, advertisers now have the ability to measure beyond that traditional reach and frequency view of metrics we've had historically. Um, they have the ability to uncover how TV, both linear independently, CTV independently, as well as the combination thereof, contributes to performance outcomes. And I think that the, the piece of tying this to outcomes is really important. We're starting to really look at how is awareness, how is TV supporting digital behavior, whether it be, is someone seeing our ad and then going to our website? Are they adding content to our cart? Are they physically transacting? acting digitally. Um, and then we're also exploring offline outcomes. So through location-based data, we could, for example, help an automotive manufacturer understand that someone saw their ad, went to their website, and then ultimately physically located a dealership. So it's really about being able to get closer and closer to that point of conversion. Um, I think the second piece here is about creativity. 
In the full report, Paul touches on the fact that CTV ads are essentially the same as their linear counterparts. Um, and I do believe that that's largely the case today. However, the tide is shifting. And on the Innovid side, we are seeing more and more advertisers embrace the enhanced functionality that's possible when you think about the digital or the IP-enabled infrastructure that's behind connected television. And I think that's really exciting because the digitization of television, it allows brands to really evolve TV creative to become more personalized and more interactive in line with that evolution of creativity we've already seen in the digital space. Um, our benchmarks also demonstrate just how powerful advanced creative can be, um, and that includes overlays, panels, TV to mobile, QR codes. There's a variety of formats, um, but we've seen that all of them do prove to enable superior performance. Um, interactive CTV in particular is leading the charge here, not only in terms of adoption, but also benefit. So this past year, we saw 56% more advertisers leveraging interactive CTV as a strategy. And on average, brands who layered a degree of interactivity into their CTV ads earned an incremental 72 seconds of time earned. And when you couple that stat with the fact that over 95% of all video ads that we served were 30 seconds or shorter in duration, the incremental impact there in terms of the amount of time your customers are actively spending with your brand is really compelling. Um, but again, like Paul said, I think it's, it's not just about CTV these days. Convergence is absolutely at the heart of this conversation. So it's also encouraging for advertisers to look at tactics like cross-device sequential messaging, which allows you to showcase your messaging in a way that best aligns with your objectives, whether that's moving someone down the purchase funnel through a combination of mobile, desktop, and CTV, or even switching out creative to address any problems around burnout so you can reap that reward. Um, but in general, I do think it's a, a really exciting time and place in the evolution of TV advertising where it can support a wide array of business objectives, whether that be independently or in context with other medias. And that, in, that includes ROI. Well, um, Paul mentioned that programmatic ad spending is gonna triple in the next four years. How do you see that trend impacting CTV and what are the opportunities? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of this comes back to the, the convergence conversation. So we're seeing that convergence is accelerating and brands are demanding a combination of more addressability as well as more flexibility. So programmatic is what we like to call the, the rising star of advertising. And CTV really is no exception. At Innovid last year, we saw about a third of our CTV impressions being served programmatically. So really strong percentage there. Um, and it's for the same reasons that Paul noted that linear is increasing. It's media buying efficiency, it's better targeting, it's better measurement. Um, but piggybacking off of the conversation we were just having about creativity, I think what's even more exciting about programmatic advertising is C in CTV is layering in some of the, the things that make programmatic so powerful data-driven media buying into the advanced side of things, or I'm sorry, the creative side of things. So it becomes about data-driven creative plus data-driven media. Um, we know that fragmentation is a challenge. I think um, the stat was 7.4 different sources of information people are pointing to these days. And oftentimes we're seeing right now from an advertiser basis that that becomes challenging because publishers are creating custom formats because they wanna compete, they wanna be different, they wanna be unique. Um, and that's wonderful, but it also creates challenges around um, production and scale for brands. So the question really becomes, how do we centralize the formats that work well across various publishers so that advertisers can maximize the benefit of those advanced creative uh, formats, but do it in a way that is scalable and does not become cumbersome. Um, one of the things that we launched last year was a programmatic interactive CTV consortium with some of the leading programmatic players in the space, such as the Trade Desk, Magnite, and more. And it was really about how do we power advanced creative buying programmatically, again, across the masses. And it really just is a testament to the fact that we as an industry, we need to band together 
to make it easier to buy what we know drives the greatest benefits to brands. And I do believe that initiatives like this consortium that are there to help open up these opportunities are just the starting point of the next wave of innovation we'll see in the market. Well, thank you, Stephanie. Now awesome. it's time to get into our audience Q&A. We've received a lot of great questions. Uh, this first one goes to Paul. When you showed combined television and CTV ad spending, you said it was a growth market, but isn't it true that TV networks don't fully benefit from that growth? Well, when you look at the CTV landscape, it's very complex. Obviously, all of the big TV networks are now invested in um, in streaming services and you know that that are basically distributed via CTV so they do benefit but it's also true that a lot of CTV platforms like Roku or Amazon or YouTube are not affiliated with TV networks so when i talk about the opportunity i'm referring to it more as an opportunity for marketers and for advertisers um, I think, you know, TV networks are part of that opportunity, but it's not, all of those dollars are obviously not flowing to them. So it's part of that fragmentation that um, Stephanie just mentioned and that I covered in, in the deck. So yes, an opportunity, but, you know, as to who fully participates or who benefits the most, that's kind of like, um, you know, that, that that's still in play, because I think a lot of parties are um, you know, in line to to benefit and in, in trying to jostle their way, you know, into larger share. This next one is for Stephanie. Given Netflix's recent announcement on opening up an advertising business, do you predict that all streaming services will follow suit in the coming years? Yeah, I mean, the short answer is yes. I think that the, the sharp increase in the adoption of streaming services during the pandemic um, means that these providers now need a new way to continue to grow and expand their user base. Um, Ad-supported video on demand, it does provide a lower entry point for people who maybe have been on the fence before, but are willing to subscribe at, to subscribe at a lower price point. Um, and I think especially with some of the market uncertainties Paul spoke on and um, people tightening their wallets, they're going to be looking for non-subscription based pro programming op opportunities. And I, I think publishers are going to follow suit and respond by providing viewers with uh, the types of, of options they want to see. And if I can just quickly add to that, um, I, I completely agree, Stephanie, but I, I think also that even before the, um, the pandemic and the, and the market uncertainties we're going through now, we, we already kind of saw some foreshadowing of this with this tremendous, you know, glut of subscription-based services that launched around, you know, 2019, early 2020. So that um, was almost a recipe for a little bit of a pendulum swing back to advertising. And then we did start seeing platforms like Pluto and Tubi really kind of like rise to the fore. And, and now that we're seeing, you know, Netflix and Disney um, basically going to the ad business. I mean, to answer the original question from the viewer, I would say that if Netflix is doing it, then pretty much everyone's going to be doing it. So yeah, I, I would agree with that. It doesn't mean there won't be some niche subscription only platforms and, you know, Apple, maybe one of them, not to call Apple a niche, but I mean, they're still not, um, they haven't really crossed that Rubicon yet, but um, it does seem like it's almost a matter of time before other companies do. Uh, we have another question. Uh, I believe this one's for Paul. What is your definition of CTV? Does it include connected devices like Roku, uh, Fire TV Stick, Smart TVs, Apple TVs, uh, VMVPDs or a subset? Connected TV for us, and, and I know that in the industry, sometimes the term CTV and OTT are used interchangeably, but just to put it in the simplest terms, we look at connected TV as any TV that's connected to the internet by any means, whether it's the built-in connectivity that a smart TV has, or whether it's a game console or a Blu-ray player or um, a streaming stick or a Roku, it's pretty much any way to connect. Um, for what it's worth, the distinction between OTT and CTV for us, again, comes back to the device. So OTT is anything that is streamed or that, that's delivered outside of traditional um, 
TV distribution. Whereas CTV is specifically for that connected TV device. So OTT could actually be something you watch on your phone or on your tablet, whereas CTV is specific to that TV screen that has internet connectivity. Okay, this one uh, could go to either Paul or Stephanie. Um, it says, what's your prediction on the evolution of addressable advertising when privacy concerns or regulations might make the model slow down somehow? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm happy to jump in. I think privacy is the the topic of conversation these days, um, and it's interesting. There's there's so many different degrees of addressability that are available in advertising and marketing these days, and I I think it's very easy for us to jump to the most advanced op opportunity of one to one targeting. Um, but the reality is, where we're seeing the most benefit and the most impact and adoption, frankly, from brands is with some of those more base tactics, right? Um, geography, time of day, day of week, weather. So I do think that the majority of the use cases that we're seeing brands adopting today will stand the test of time around privacy. Um, and as like every other every other factor of this industry, um, there are so many different methodologies that are being tested and deployed in real time today to determine what is going to be the alternative to cookies if and when that ever sunsets. So I would say I think today, here and now, based on how advertisers are thinking about addressability and um, through the lens of both media and creativity, we're in a pretty safe spot, but we've got a lot of smart people across a lot of big companies that are working on solving for that challenge. And as legislation evolves, I think technology and strategies and approaches will evolve correspondingly. Yeah, and I think addressable, I mean, you know, when we talk about addressable, it's basically through uh, linear TV channels. And I think a lot of that is basically going to spill over into the connected TV and streaming space anyway. So in, in some ways, what we think of now as linear addressable is, is basically going to be eclipsed. I mean, already has been to some extent. But at the end of the day, I think, um, you know, the privacy issues are probably not going to be a huge inhibitor. I, I think, as Stephanie said, you know, there's a spectrum to um, privacy. And for the most part, I think people will accept it unless it, you know, really crosses a line, which in most cases, mm -hmm. it doesn't. And, you know, again, back to what Stephanie said about creative options, and a lot of the things that Innovid and others are doing, that's really where the crux is going to be. And I think some of those capabilities are going to basically um, offset some of the concerns that people have around privacy because the experience is going to be so much better that they're going to be more willing to opt into those experiences. So we have time for one more question. The question is, how much of the growth that you're seeing in CTV ad spending is coming from rising ad prices? Well, I, I can talk about that. And Stephanie, if you want to chime in, you're welcome to as well. Um, I think very little of it is coming from uh, rising prices. Yes, prices are rising. And as I mentioned, you know, CTV is a premium channel. And for a lot of the reasons we've discussed, there's a, you know, there's good justification for um, publishers and platforms charging more for those ads because they really do deliver a richness that you're, you're not going to get on traditional channels. But I think the, the gist of why, um, you know, we're seeing that growth in CTV doesn't have as much to do with prices. And this is not one of those situations with like the movie industry where box office attendance has gone down, but they've raised prices. So they've kind of like, and this is, you know, pre-pandemic, but they kind of kept the, you know, the revenues at the same level by simply raising prices. This is not that at all. Really, I think what you're seeing is just an explosion of viewership, a proliferation of platforms and tons and tons of content flowing to those platforms, either legacy content or content specifically made for CTV. So that I would say that's really where the bulk of the growth is coming from. 
Yeah, and I would just say um, all the stats that I shared, so all of Vinavid's benchmarks are reporting on impression volume, not ad spend. So when you look at the deltas and the increases that we were reporting on, um, the, the concept of, of actual CPMs is not included. So we're seeing massive growth in volume, and that volume is irregardless of price. So, uh, you know, to Paul's point, the trend is there. People are spending more and more. Um, but regardless of if the CPM is moving up or down, they're still continuing to invest in connected devices. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Thanks again to Paul for joining us. And to a very special thanks to Stephanie and the team at Innovid. Our eMarketer production crew behind the scenes also deserves a huge thank you for making this webinar possible. As promised, we'll be emailing you soon with a link to the slides and full recording. Before we wrap up, let me take a moment to tell you what's happening across Insider Intelligence's media channels. You can register for upcoming live analyst and tech talk webinars at emarketer.com backslash webinars. On the audio side, don't forget to tune into Behind the Numbers, our daily podcast. And finally, check out our newsletters. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your workday.